<laughs> I might fall off. So uh, I'm just going to read a few sections. Uh, first of all, um, the acknowledgements. I would like to acknowledge how this book came into existence. It was all thanks to the encouragement of my ex-case manager, Ms. Aung Su Ying. I had written an extended letter to my friends to explain what had happened to me. Su Ying had taken the initiative to show it to some of her colleagues working in the medical sector, and the feedback was very encouraging. This led me to turn the letter into a book. Alongside Su Ying's support, the actions of my mother were instrumental to my recovery. Not only did she encourage my friends to persuade me during my period of denial that seeing a doctor was a good idea, she also did unspeakable of mixing medications into my meals without my knowledge. Although some might say that this was unethical since I had personally refused my medications, it had the effect of making me clear-headed enough to realize that something was indeed wrong with me and that I had to get myself to a psychiatrist. Further, my mother was determined that I should become as independent as I was before my descent into madness. To this end, I was not allowed to move back home but was forced to live for myself. My parents paid for my rent while I searched for a job to begin supporting myself. Although I was somewhat unhappy with the decision of my parents to throw me out, this strategy of my mother's to get me back to my former self was probably the most effective course of action that resulted in my speedy reintegration back into society. So, um, so another section that I wanted to read uh, has to do with um, the, the notion of stigma. I am often asked by others how life is different for me as a person with schizophrenia living in a society in which mental illness is seen as a taboo subject. Two experiences demonstrate this. The first is that a few weeks after I was diagnosed with schizophrenia, I received a letter from the National University of Singapore terminating my scholarship. I had failed a taught module. It was the first time I had ever failed in university and I see the poor performance at that time as a result of my acute illness. Later when I recovered, I wrote to the university asking to resume my studies with philosophy. The university was aware of my illness as well as of my progress in controlling it. However, the head of the department wrote back to me saying that resuming my studies was not possible and that I should think about doing something else which effectively terminated my academic career. After this rejection, I put in several applications to work in the public sector including the Ministry of Defence, the Ministry of Information, Communications and the Arts and the National Library Board. In every case, I was either rejected or not considered. I also had um, a job interview for relief teaching at a local elite school. Prior to my interview, I was not asked if I had a history of mental illness. When I admitted that I had had an episode of psychosis, I could feel the attitude towards me change. I didn't hear from my interviewers again, which was rather disappointing to me. After all, I do have a master's degree and so I'm well qualified to teach at the secondary school level in my subject matter. But it seems as though I don't have a chance of uh, because of my past illness, it seems as though in becoming ill I have become part of a shunned minority of the population. Thankfully, compared to the public sector, I have had less difficulty in getting a well-paid contract job in private companies. But even here, I had some frustrating experiences. For example, I had a positive job interview and was verbally offered the job. Later on, they did a double take when they realized that I had declared my condition on the job application form. They decided to ask me not to come in for work after all. From these responses, it looks as though I'm being discriminated on the basis that I had schizophrenia. It makes me, or that I have, um, it makes me wonder if people with mental illness are assumed to be heading towards failure and hence not given the opportunities they might otherwise have had. It makes it pretty clear to me that succeeding in our society is extremely difficult if you allow it to be known that you have a mental illness. Would an employer not hire someone because he has diabetes? I do not think so. Yet I hear that a diabetic person can spiral out of control and his health can severely deteriorate if he is not treated. On the other hand, if his condition is under control, a diabetic person should be able to function well and work well. Likewise for the person with mental illness. If one's condition is stable, then one should be able to work and function well, just like everyone else. So I think people with mental conditions are often unfairly stigmatized. Mental illness doesn't necessarily mean being incapable of working or of making a decent living for oneself. Yet this is how people with mental conditions are being treated, it seems, disregarding the state of control they were able to establish in their condition. We are not given job interviews, we get fired from our existing jobs with little chance of returning after recovery. It all seems a bit unfair. So I, I chose that section so that we can reflect about how things are like in our society and 
maybe you could even do something about it. The next section I picked out um, is quite different and it's about what being a mental patient in hospital is like. There are people outside the ward who may think it is peaceful inside and as such wish to be there. It almost seems as though people would make excuses and create pretenses in order to be in the ward. You might pretend to be ill in order to stay in the ward and avoid the pressures and responsibilities of the real world outside. But the idea of wanting to be in the ward seems ridiculous from my point of view. It was unbearable to be inside. For the most part, I was afraid I would never get out. One evening, I was restless, so I kept wandering from my bed to lie in other empty beds. In response, they tied me to the bed for the night. I have vivid memories of the pain of being tied down. I finally figured out how to make a noise by bumping my, my bum against the mattress, but no one would untie me. When they finally released me the next morning, I collapsed onto the floor. My legs were so weak that I could not walk, so they had to lift me onto a wheelchair and wheel me to the toilet where they showered me with cold water. Still, I could not stand. I suffered more pain when they tied me up a second time. This was because I did not want to take a nap at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I wanted to sit in the sitting area between the dining and sleeping areas. The nurse told me to obey instructions or else, and I chose the or else, which meant being tied to a bed by my wrists and ankles. It is no use struggling when you're tied down like that. My sister happened to visit me when I was tied up and she couldn't help crying when she saw me. Protocol, my brother said, if you don't listen to instructions, this is what happens to you. I had to learn lessons the hard way. For a while, I did not understand why I was in hospital. I did not believe I was ill. I thought this unfortunate set of circumstances had happened because I had attended a series of opposition party meetings when I was 17. I imagined that the government had realized that uh, I could become an opposition member, so they made me ill in order to stop me, stop me from speaking in public. This idea was uh, so ludicrous that it makes me laugh to think of it now, but at the time it was horribly real. Okay, and the, the last section that I picked out um, is in chapter 9 of the book, and it has basically, it, uh, the, the chapter basically describes three particular worries that I had, that I was having at the time, and I pick out the second worry, which is about secrecy, because I think it's a very pertinent issue uh, for people with mental conditions. I wouldn't like anyone to know I am ill. My parents told me to keep it a secret so I could make some new friends, and a social worker told me that many people with my condition choose to keep their illness a secret from their employers. <coughs> When I approached Silver Ribbon Singapore to ask for help with my book, they wanted to meet me. When we met, they emphasized that I was young and that I should think carefully about going public with my condition. The worry was that I would not be able to find employment if everyone knew about it. The idea was that employers do not generally hire those with a previous or existing history of mental illness. The idea was to keep a men my mental illness a secret from employers so as to get a job. My parents said, when you're successful, then you can reveal that you're mentally ill. But I should not let it be known that I'm mentally ill before becoming a successful person. Why? Is it because the stigma against mental illness would prevent me from even having the opportunities to prove myself? Is being mentally ill such a bad situation to be in that one is ostracized and alienated by the society that one lives in? So far, I, I have experienced sympathy and, and empathetic responses from people. Most people do not give me disgusted looks. They do not avoid me. One person, during the writing of this book, one person also from the Straits Times offered to interview me about this book. Am I being naive in thinking that my book was helpful, a consolation to those who have been ill and to those who have family or friends who are ill, or will publishing the book have negative ramifications on myself? People of my generation really admire ambassadors of mental wellness, ambassadors such as Harris Ng. Harris Ng is one person who went all out with being honest about his condition. Why shouldn't we follow in his footsteps? In being open about his illness, he must have brought significant cheer to those suffering from illness and to those who have family or friends suffering from illness. Should we stand in one corner and admire him and do nothing ourselves? 
it reminds me of the story of the tightrope walker who crossed the Niagara Falls on tightrope and then asked people if they believed that he could do it again with a man on his back. When they said he could, he asked who would volunteer to be that man and all fell silent. We agree that Harrison is a courageous man for coming forward with his illness and telling his story. Should we not also tell our stories and, and share our experiences of coming to terms with illness? Should we not raise philosophical and fundamental questions about mental illness? Should we not raise awareness about mental illness? I have reminders all over my apartment, posters on the walls reminding me to take my medications. But the reminders are shrouded in secrecy. Take your M, says one. Take your supplements, beats another. The word medications is not used because the word in my family is the who. It is as though one could get ill by saying the word, or rather all the sadness and worries associated with my getting ill would return. I feel very anxious every time I have a conversation with someone. I'm naturally inclined towards deep conversations, so I worry that talking about myself will lead me to reveal my condition. I have to be on my toes in every conversation. Sometimes I wonder if the effort is worth it, if it is better just to avoid talking to other people about my personal life so I can avoid the trouble of revealing my condition, because it now seems as though it is a part of me that people have to know in order uh, to know me. But of course I can't avoid talking to people forever. I have to maneuver around conversational topics and even avoid questions about what I was doing from 2008 to 2009. If I was going to be honest, there is sometimes no way to avoid talking about my condition. Perhaps I'm afraid of people's reactions. I wonder if they will avoid me because I went to a mental hospital. Something is wrong with my brain. There's to say something big. So my fear of people's reactions also gives me anxiety. I don't just worry about having the condition, I also worry about what others think of me. 